Lena, my angel, can you read to me the title? Lesson two, electric field. Field, I've heard that word in the last unit. So this little bit is a bit of review. The gravitational field reflects the effect that a mass has on the space around it. If you're Einstein, you would say the gravitational field is the warping of space-time that the mass does when it sits on that rubber sheet. We're not going to pretend that's what's going on. That's Einstein. We're going to say this. If you have a mass in space, it sends out, like the invisible tentacles of an octopus in all directions, a gravitational field that's always there. And then when a small mass comes along and ends up in that gravitational field, it feels a gravitational force of attraction caused by the field. I went on that rant about how we can't have action at a distance, and I'll go on it again. So uh, in physics, we say you can't have action at a distance. You can't pull on one object without touching it except that seems to be what's happening in gravity. You are touching it. You're touching it invisibly with a gravitational field. And I'll do that rant a bit more. Here's what I want you to do. Fill in the appropriate relationships. What's the equation for the force of universal gravitation? It's on your sheet. Kevin. Force of universal gravitation. Big G. Times big uh, M. Little M. Over R squared. That was our modified one that I, because that was more convenient. Okay. <coughs> and then while we're at it, Kevin, from your formula sheet, third equation, what's the definition of gravitational field? Uh, FG over M. Now that's what it is as a ratio. It is FG over little m. And then that gave us the equation for gravitational field, uh, uh, which was big G, big M over r squared. By the way, on your test, on a, for a few of you, I asked you to find the gravitational field. I think it was near a black hole. Some of you found gravitational force. I gave you a zero because you found not what I asked for. I asked for gravitational field. So that was three marks or four marks thrown away. What are the units? I can figure it out. Kevin, what are the units for force? Uh, what are the units for mass? Uh, kilograms. So must be newtons per kilogram. In theory, none of that is new, but I want you to notice, Sarah, there's two ways that I can figure out gravitational field. One way is if I know the planet causing the gravitational field, big M. The other way is if I know uh, the force that's acting on the satellite in space, it's feeling a tug. I can go take that force, divide by the mass that tells me the gravitational field strength. Both of those work. So A says, find the gravitational field strength that far from the Earth's center. B says, find the gravitational field strength if a 10 kilogram test mass has a weight of 750 uh, newtons. A, how will I find the gravitational field strength in A? Do I know the planetary mass that's causing the field? Or do I know the test mass that's stuck in the gravity of the planet. What planet are we talking about, Meniere and A? Earth. Oh, so I'm going to use this one. Big G, big M over R squared. It's going to be 6.67 times 10 to negative 11, 5.98. I still have these numbers memorized for this unit. And R was 8.38 times 10 to the sixth squared. I don't have to add the radius of the Earth because it did say from the Earth's center. What do you get? Can you crunch that on your calculator, please? Oh, I know it'll be less than 9.8. Yes? Because we're further from the Earth. You okay, Kev? Yeah, it is. Just you need to go. You can if you want, or you can stay here. Either way. 5.68? Yeah. 5.68 uh, units. Um, newtons, per newtons per kilogram. And if that was a planet with that gravitational field strength, 
objects would fall with an acceleration of 5.68 meters per second squared because the gravitational field strength is 5.68 newtons per kilogram. Okay. Weight, no now. Weight. Well, weight is mg. So if I know that the force of gravity is mg, then little g is the force of gravity divided by the mass. That's the ratio. That's the third equation that I gave you in the gravity unit. Here, do I know the size of the planet? No. Do I know how far away from the planet I am? No. What I do know is, well, I've measured the force that I'm feeling, and I know the mass that's experiencing the force. That'll also give me the gravitational field strength. It's going to be, I can do this one in my head, 750 divided by 10, 75, yes? Did you really use your calculator for that, Meneer? Are you kidding me? Okay. Two ways to calculate or measure field strength. One is if you know the planet, how far away you are. One is, I don't know what the planet is, but I can, I can measure the tug, the force on me, and I know how much mass there is here. That can also figure it out. Electric field acts in the same way. So in the same way that a planet's gravitational field reaches out like the invisible tentacles of an octopus in all directions and is able to draw masses toward itself, any charged object sends out like the invisible tentacles of an octopus an electric field in all directions. Uh, the only problem is it can both attract objects if they are unlike charges, but like charges repel. It can also repel objects. So, sorry, stuff can fall up. Sorry. Okay? So, if I have a big charge Q, it is sending out, like the invisible tentacles of an octopus in all directions, an electric field, typically symbolized with a capital E, with a vector. By the way, this is also why I don't use E for energy, because E without a vector is E for energy. E with a vector is electric field. This is why I do PE and KE to avoid that confusion, even though PE and KE is wrong. And even though E is technically wrong, you're supposed to use a capital letter U. Why U? Because not all physics is done by English speaking people. So this electric field is just sitting there passively, but it exists. And then as soon as you put a second charged object in, it can either be attracted or repelled. So I'll put arrows pointing in both ways, but I'll say there will be an electric force. And we can figure out the equation for electric field by using the same argument we did for gravity. What was the force of electricity? What was electric force? Coulomb's law. That was K. Now I'm going to go big Q, little q over R squared, where big Q is the planetary charge that's sending out the electric field, and little q is the tiny roaming satellite charge that's stuck in the electric field. See, I'm relating it all to gravity. I told you this is going to be mathematically very similar to gravity. What's the definition of electric field? Well, the definition of electric field is the electric force per coulomb of charge. The same way the definition of gravitational field was the gravitational force per kilogram of mass. Which means, first of all, as a ratio, electric field is the electric force the charge is experiencing divided by how big the charge is. Or, if I use the same trick of saying, take this equation and cancel out a Q, the same way as we said you could take this equation and cancel out an M to get that, if I know the planetary charge that's creating the electric field, can you see what it's going to be? K big Q over R squared. You'll notice, Nate, I'm putting vectors on the E. Electric field has a direction. I haven't told you what it is yet. 
because it's going to be a little weird because stuff can fall up or stuff can fall down. We'll, we'll need to do something with direction here, I think. Nate, looking at this, what would the units for electric field be? Would I measure force in? Yeah. Newtons per coulomb. Sarah, you can see that's actually an awful lot like newtons per kilogram. This is why I said to you, charge Q is going to behave an awful lot like mass M did for gravity. And you can turn the page. Little note, just the same as with electric force, even though charges can be negative, we don't want a negative electric field. So that's why I think on your formula sheet, did I put an absolute value sign thingy right there? Yes? Don't put the negative or positive in. We'll figure out the magnitude, and then I'll tell you how to define the direction. So, Lyndon, what's A asking me to find? Um, field. What's B asking me to find? Uh, field. Oh, I'll bet you we're going to use both approaches. Okay, you've all turned the page. I'm going to jot down right here. We have, well, we have one version of electric field right there, and then the other version of electric field was electric force divided by little q. Now, in the version that I circled, that's when you know the big planetary charge that's causing the field. And your hint is, typically, you'll have a distance from that planet. Which one of these, Lyndon, did they give me a distance from that planet? B. So I think I'm going to use this one for B. So let's see. It says I can find the magnitude of the electric field by going K planetary charge over R squared. Oh, yeah, because this is the planetary charge that's causing the electric field. This works, this works, this works. Do you remember what K was, Lyndon? It's the nicest constant. It's much nicer than 6.67 times 10 to negative 11. This one you'll probably memorize because it's only got two numbers. 9 times 10 to the ninth. Way easier to type on your calculator. Q is 2.3. Who remembers what that micro got replaced with? 10 to the what? Hmm? Now, if you forget, it's on the chart of prefixes that I gave you on your sheet. So it is uh, 10 to the negative 6 divided by 0.45 squared. Now you can use your calculator. How big is the electric field? Typically, you're getting an electric field typically in the thousands or tens of thousands. Not always, but usually. In other words, if you get something in the thousands or the tens of thousands, you're probably right. If you don't, we'll double check the numbers. But I can't remember. This one might be an exception. What would you get? 102,000? Yeah, that seems right. 102,000? 102,000 what? Units? It's newtons per coulomb. I guess that means part A, I can probably use the ratio method. Looking at part A, Kyle, did they tell me the test charge, the satellite charge? Oh, and did they tell me the force that it's experiencing? that it's experiencing, well then, oh, electric field is going to be the force at that location divided by the charge at that location. It's going to be 5.2 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 0.5 microcoulombs. I didn't include the negative. I'll use that to figure out direction. How? Patience, young grasshopper. Uh... It's going to be uh, 10.4, uh, 1,040 yeah. newtons per coulomb. And that's why, by the way, I was also careful, Lyndon. You'll notice I didn't actually ask you to find the electric field. I said find the magnitude and find the magnitude because it is a vector, and I will on your test ask you for a direction, and I, you'll hear me. In fact, I guarantee you, by the way, you'll be asked to find an electric field, but it'll be between two points, not just one. We'll get there. Magnitude and direction. The direction of the electric field 
Well, with gravity, Sarah, this was never an issue because gravity always attracts. With electric field, charge can attract or repel. We have to define the direction, and here's how we define it. It's underlined. You might want to put a little star next to this. You might want to highlight it. This is something you absolutely have to know. How do we figure out the direction? We ask ourselves a question. We say, supposing there was a small imaginary positive test point. It's positive, but how small is it? Um, so small, Kevin, that it doesn't have its own electric field because that would change the question, which really means it's imaginary, but it's positive. We ask, which way would it want to move? That's the direction of the electric field, which means if the big planet is positive, repel. If the big planet is negative, attract. So example five. This is the same question we just did. We found the magnitude, but now it wants the direction. So what's the charge on this test charge, positive or negative? What's the charge on this test charge, positive or negative? What direction is the negative charge feeling a force? South? If a negative feels a force south, which way would a positive feel a force? That's the direction of the electric field. B says, find the direction of the electric field to the right, right there. Manier, the planetary charge. What's the charge on it, positive or negative? What, read that to me right there. Are you positive? So that's positive. So in our mind, imagine another little tiny positive right there. How tiny? So tiny that it doesn't have its own electric field because that would change the question, but it's positive. Which way would a positive sitting right there want to move if it could? Would it be to the left attract or would it be to the right repel? You could also say east, but since they, in the direction, said to the right, I'll use to the right. The short version is electric field lines always point from positive to negative. The only reason I don't like that shorter definition is because often you don't have both charges in your picture. If it's always which way would a positive want to move if it could, that will handle any diagram you throw at me. But here it says draw the electric field around a positive charge. The electric field would look like this. Draw four lines. One, two, three, four. On this line right here, the one that's pointing vertically, which way would a positive want to move if it could? So this will be an electric field line pointing up. Which way will this electric field line point? And then down, and then left. We could add more lines if we wanted to. There. You know what? I'll go with a nice even eight. These are called electric field diagrams. They are popularized, popularized by Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday was a brilliant scientist who could do very little math. He, He's an interesting fellow. I'll go on a nerd rant about him another time. but. He did most of his physics with pictures. And so the idea behind an electric field diagram is the lines tell you the direction. The closeness of the lines tell you the strength. Do you notice that the lines are closer together there than right there? As you move further away, electric field gets weaker. In fact, if there's an R squared on the bottom, twice as far away means four times weaker. Three times as far away means nine times weaker. And then the other thing is the number of lines. How many lines did I draw? Eight. If you saw another charge with four lines, you would say that electric field is half as big. doesn't mean it's four and it's eight. It just means you're telling me it's half as big. If you saw one with 16 lines, you'd say that electric field is twice as big. If you saw one with eight lines in the same picture, you would say, oh, he's telling me both these electric fields are the same magnitude. So it, I'm not saying that it's eight newtons per coulomb. I'm just saying the number of lines you can use to compare other charges in the same diagram. So if I drew the electric field around a negative charge, 
on this vertical line at the top, which way would a positive want to move if it could? Towards the charge? So you know what? This one will have all of its arrows pointing towards the charge. And you know what, Sarah? I'll just do four lines to indicate that charge is half as big as the one I did before. Put your pencils down. So this is a sim from FET, a physics website, P-H-E-T. It's called the Electric Field of Dreams. So we know that this is negative because electric field lines are pointing towards it. I'll add one. What do like charges do? Okay, this is what's going on all the time on a subatomic level, an atomic level. Uh, I'm going to add another charge, but this charge, uh, did, 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 oh, properties, I'm going to make, instead of negative one, positive one. They all have the same mass. This one here, negative or positive, and how do you know? because the electric field lines point away from it. That's which way a positive in that area would want to go. This is a negative one. This is a negative one. And they're interacting with each other. Oh, I added another positive charge. All right, I didn't mean to hit that, but okay. And so we get all this going on. This is the churning mass of, this is kinetic energy. This is what's moving on on the atomic level all the time. Not in crystals, but in particular in liquids that are in solution. This is why, I think I told you the other day, if you drop some food coloring into a glass of water and don't agitate it and walk away, come back in an hour, you'll find the coloring has spread itself nice and evenly all the way through because this dance is going on, this repulsion, this attraction is going on all the time. So, direction of the electric field. Which way would uh, positive, my abbreviation for the word positive is a plus sign VE, test charge want to move if it could. It's such a tiny, t uh, question mark, it's such a tiny test charge Mitra that it has no electric field of its own, because if it did, that would change the question. But it's positive. That's why we call it a test charge or an imaginary charge. The short version, from positive, to negative. But you can see why I use this definition because on the pictures that I've been showing you, there wasn't both a positive and a negative always. I can always figure it out from one. To determine the electric field of two charges, and I'm going to do that, I guarantee this is a question on your test, we're going to use the principle of superposition. What that really means is we find each electric field, magnitude and direction, and then we add them vectorially. I like example six, I like example six. Like exa example six, will you marry me? Kevin looked at me strangely, but you got the hint, okay? You got the hint? Uh, it wants us to find the electric field at that location. I'm gonna call this charge one, I'll call this charge two. And get in the habit of just taking the time to label stuff. It's just much nicer. The same way as uh, in Physics 11 when we first showed you the Atwood machine and in Physics 12. Is there more than one mass? We call the first one M1, second one M2. Don't call them all M's. Don't call them all Q's. I'm going to find, Linden, the electric field from charge 1, magnitude and direction. Kyle, I'm going to find the electric field from charge two, magnitude and direction. And then I'll combine them vectorially by going winner minus loser. Or if they're in the same direction, winner plus winner. Why can I do that? Are they in a nice straight line, Lena? So I don't need to go tip to tail funky trig? Yay! Will I eventually reach tip to tail funky trig? Yay! How do I find the electric field? These are the planetary charges sending out their electric field. And the way I know that, Linden, is they've given me the distance I am, the R, the radius from them. So I'm going to use for charge 1, KQ1 over R1 squared. Linden, what's K? It's a lovely constant. It's nice and easy to remember because it only has two numbers. No, yes. Not nine. Yes. You said nine. I said no. Yes. Oh, okay. Really, Lynn? What is it? Nine times ten. Took you longer than a second, believe me. 
How big is Q1? Positive. Oh, I, I'm not going to include the sign, the positive or the negative. Eyes open, Lena. Sit up. One microcoulomb. What's R? So it's going to be one square. Put your calculator down, Nathan. Are you kidding me? Nathan, what's nine times one? What's nine times one? Divided by one squared is what? Still nine. So the number portion is going to be a nine. And then I have a ten to the ninth times ten to the negative six. I think you can add... Oh, are you telling me it's going to be 9,000 newtons per coulomb? No calculator required. Direction. So we're ignoring this charge here completely. Which way would a positive right there want to move if it could because of that one? Right? You know what? Let's even go and let's call it east. Repeat for the right-hand charge. That's going to be KQ2 over R2 squared. Lyndon, what's K? And one microcoulomb again. Lyndon, what's R? Don't say four. Careful. Don't forget the squared. Nate, put your calculator down. Nathan, what's nine times one? Divided by 3 squared. Oh, 1. And then what's 10 to the 9th times 10 to the negative 6? 1,000 newtons per coulomb. Direction. Which way would a positive at this field point want to move if it could because of that guy? Now, on your test, I'm not going to go out of my way to make it work out evenly like this did. I just have to get a chance to make fun of somebody who reaches for their calculators on these. Sarah, in your head, what would 9,000 east plus 1,000 west be? How am I going to do it? Are they in the same direction? Who's winning? East. So it's going to be 9,000 minus 1,000. In your head? Direction? Units? Ta-da. So the electric field is going to be 8,000 newtons per coulomb east. I guarantee I'm going to ask you to do a question like that. However, I may put the field point in between them. I may put it over here, but I'll give you all the distances that you need. I may put it over there. I'll give you all the distances that you need. I may make one positive and one negative. I may make them both in the same direction, which means you can add them up. I may make them in opposite directions, and you have to go winner minus loser. I don't care. In fact, it's easy for me to come up with so many variations. I'll have four or five different versions on the different tests. Uh, example 7 says, draw approximately, approximately, the resultant electric field at the indicated points. Both charges are one microcoulomb. We can figure this out because I have a sim. Here is my electric field simulator. So these are nanocoulombs, not microcoulombs, but I think the principle will hold. So I'll draw, are they both positive in your picture? And they're kind of in a straight line? Okay. I have electric field sensors right here. These will actually show me the net electric field, the combined electric field all over the place. And I guess I'm going to kind of want in between here. Does what you see make sense with the arrows? Let's let's you know what? Let's see if we can walk through it now. Right here, I think I'd have pushing to the right from you know what, let's call this Q1. Let's call this Q2. I think Q1 would be pushing to the right. I think Q2 would be pushing to the left with an electric field. Would they be the same magnitude? Are both charges the same size, Kevin? Okay, yes. Are we the same R distance away? Yeah. You know what? Then you'll get the same answer when you go KQ over R squared. What will happen when you have those two adding up together? You should get an answer of? Zero. Let's go check my sim. Are you telling me that halfway in between, I should end up with pretty much no electric field? Yeah. 
Right about there? Cool. What about uh, right here? Well, Q1 is going to be offering an electric field to the right. Q2 is going to be pushing to the left, but since it's further away, its electric field is not going to be as strong. What will my net electric field be when I add those together, pointing which direction, Kyle? But not as big as the first air. You know what? I think probably the net field, something like that. Let's find out. So you're telling me over here, something like that? Oh, cool. What do you think over here? I think it's symmetrical. I think same idea. What about in the middle up here? So, which way will the electric field point? Well, I think, Kevin, Q1 is kind of pushing it that way. Q2 is kind of pushing it that way. Hey, that's two vectors. How might I add those two vectors together? Draw them. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go see if it'll let me do it. be cool if it did. Tip to tail. Lena, I think I'm getting a resultant pointing straight up. Because I'm going to I think they're both the same size. Let's double check that. So you're telling me if I go in the center, this sim is acting up. Let's reload it. Is it going to work now, Mr. Duick? That'd be, there we go. So we have one positive, one negative. This thing is running really slow for some reason. OK. Electric field sensor. If I go to the middle and kind of go straight up, Oh, a little close. About like that? What do you think this one's going to look like right there? Straight up and pretty big from this guy. Diagonally up and left, but not as big from... Okay. Hmm. Straight up and pretty big, plus diagonally up and left. I think it's going to be slightly left, but mostly up. Does that make sense, Sarah? Let's find out. Slightly left, but mostly up. Yeah, I'm good with that. What would the electric field pattern be for equal like charges? Equal means same number of lines. Electric field lines always point from what to what? Electric field direction says which way would a what want to move if it could? A positive. So it means it's always going to point from positive to negative. Okay? Another way to think about this. So just put your pencil down for a second and watch. Let's suppose here is the path that a positive charge would take. Let's suppose we have a positive sitting right there. It's a tiny positive charge and it's free to move. It's going to get repelled by this guy, but it's also going to get repelled by the right-hand charge. I think it's going to kind of travel that way. Eric, I think a charge starting on the other side right there is going to kind of travel that way. I think a charge right here is going to kind of travel that way, kind of travel that way. What if I start right there? So I'd get repelled, repelled, but I'm also going to get repelled by, I, I think I'm going to kind of curve up in a way because I'm getting repelled by both charges. I think like this. I think a line like this would probably just almost go straight because it's kind of getting repelled by both, but not quite from the same angle, so there'd be a tiny curvature. You want a better picture? You can pick your pencils up now. Uh, this one here is equal positive like charges. So you can kind of take, I'll leave this up. You stay on your page. Pick your pencils up. Do a rough sketch, but you don't need to do as many lines but just make sure you do the same number of lines coming from each charge because your question did say the charges were identical. Yes? Lena, you're blinking for longer and longer. Every time I see you, you got to make it. Go for a walk, get a drink if you need to.
Okay. So don't do like 16 or however many this is. Do five or I think I did six ish. Now, if you want to see my version again, something like that. Here's what I do know. In the middle here, in fact, right there, I can tell you there will be no electric field because the net electric field would be exactly zero. We found that with the sim. If you want to see that with the sim, Wait a minute. I think they have an HTML. I'll come back in a second. Uh, charges and fields, electrostatics. Let's try that one. Ah, yeah, that's the better sim. This is the HTML5 one. Ah, so bring out a positive. Bring out a positive. Get a little closer. And turn the electric field off. Direction only. Oh. You can sort of see the same picture that I'm showing you, ish, kind of, sort of, ish. What about equal and opposite charges? I can tell you one for sure, Sarah. If a positive charge started right there, whomp, because it's being repelled by the positive and attracted by the negative. It's going straight across. Yes? What about if a pause? you know what? I'm going to change colors so it doesn't overlap. I'll do this one in red. Yump. What if I started right here? I'd get repelled, but I'm also getting attracted. I think I'd curve towards the negative. Here, 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 I'd get repelled and attracted. You're kind of getting a little bug looking at you or something like that with great big eyes. Kevin, if something left the screen over here, it would come back on the screen over here. And you can imagine a really big arc. In fact, again, if you want to see a better version of that, it would look kind of an awful lot like this. This was done with software as opposed to freehanding. Definitely, there would be a line straight across in the middle and other positively charged objects would follow those paths as they were moving towards the negative charge. There is the electric field around a positive, around a negative. So I wrote down here, the idea of an electric field originated with Michael Faraday. He used lines of force which showed the direction that a positive test charge would follow, would move, the path that would trace out if it was placed anywhere in the electric field. I'm not going to ask you on your test to draw an electric field diagram, but I guarantee on your test I will give you a picture of an electric field, multiple choice question, and I'll say which of these is the correct electric field. Or what I'll do is this. Here's another classic question. Look up, look up, look up. You'll get this picture, and I'll say which charge is positive, which charge is negative, or are they both positive, or are they both negative? How can you tell? Because electric field lines always point from positive to negative. Summary, the electric field can be found using the definition, if we're told the force that a test charge experiences at that point. And this is like little g equals fg over m. It's sort of the equivalent of that. It can be found using the point charge equation. Electric field is KQ over R squared. And again, this is like the uh, big G, big M over R squared version. That's when you know the planet that's causing the gravity. That's when you know the planetary charge that's causing the electric field. Recall electric field direction is always from positive to negative. Which way would a positive want to move if it could? Now, that gives us two ways to find the force. 
The first way is Coulomb's law. K, Q1, Q2. Oh, you know what? Instead of writing Q1, Q2, big Q, little q over r squared. I'll make it look even more like our gravity equation, where big Q is the planetary charge that's sending out the electric field. Little Q is the little satellite charge that's stuck in the electric field and either getting repelled or attracted. Lyndon, what's K? Nine scientific notation button nine. Nine times ten to the ninth. Yeah, I totally care. Sure you do. There's another way to find the force, Lyndon. Is there a force in this equation? Get the F by itself. Another way to find the force is to go Q, E. And I'm going to say to you, doesn't this look a lot like uh, M, G? The, if you were on the planet, or the, 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 uh, if I know the gravitational field strength, I can just go straight to there without having to go through all the mechanics. Recall that for electric force, direction is found by considering whether charges attract or repel. I have to give you the most addictive bonus video game ever. I apologize in advance. Put your pencils down. If you, you can write, the, actually, she's write this down. If you go to Google FET electric field hockey. That's what you're going to Google. This will not run on a mobile device. It may not run on a Mac. If you have trouble getting it to run on a PC, let me know. There's a few tricks. Is it under E for electric field hockey? I got a more modern one, I think. Nope, that's the old one. Good gosh, Duke. Let's go with this one. This is electric field hockey. The puck is positive. Your job is to score a goal using positive and negative charges. So if I put a positive right there, like charges, which way will this puck move? That's level zero. Okay. Level one, I have to bank the puck around that wall. So I guess now I want to kind of start out going that way. But that's just going to shoot off the page. So I'll put another positive here to maybe when it gets close, bank it this way. Oh, you know what? I'll put a negative inside the goal to kind of attract it in. Let's see what that does. Uh, maybe I need to just put a little positive right there to deflect it maybe. Oh, hit the post. What am I, the Olympic team? Oh, man. Oh, no, no, I, you know what? Why don't I try moving this positive just a little further back? Okay. You get no points for level one. Level two, if you take a video of that on your phone, that will get you one point. You're not allowed to bank off of the page and come back on the page. You have to stay on the screen. And level three, that'll get you two bonus marks on your test. However, to get the bonus marks, you have to go through here. You can't go around this area. This is addictive, I warn you. One of the neat things is that it tracks your numbers of a, your, your number of attempts. I'm going to pause. This. What's your homework? Yeah, you're going to get some homework over spring break. Um, two is good. Three is good. Five is good. Six is good. Uh, here on this diagram, it says one micro coulombs. I stole this diagram from somewhere else, and whoever that person was didn't know how to find the little mu symbol clearly, and they wrote it out, micro coulombs. Um, 
Number eight is very similar to the bonus question that I gave you. I'm not going to assign it, but it's really similar to the bonus question. I'm not wild about number 10. 11 is good. 12 is good. 13 is good. <sighs> 17 is good. right there for now.